Hi, this is Mr. Cordes, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to conduct some preliminary activities for our necklace unit. We are reading a short story called The Necklace by Guy de Maupassant. Uh, it's a great story. I love it. Um, however, before we jump into it, we're going to um, practice a couple skills, go over some vocabulary, do some things that are going to help us um, as we progress through this particular reading. Um, there's lots of things uh, in this video today as well as to accomplish. Some items you will turn in today and some items you will keep. So please pay attention um, to the instructions. Also, ladies and gentlemen, as I go through, you'll need a chance. Um, you will need to stop at any chance uh, to go back and forth between your own documents. So from the video, you can pause go over to your document, fill in what you need to, come back. So you're gonna be moving back and forth um, a lot during this, this video because we're gonna cover multiple things, okay? First things first, um, you have in front of you this uh, context clues worksheet. Context clues is where we identify a certain word um, simply because we identify, sorry, let me back up. We identify a certain word based upon the clues in the sentence when we don't know what that word is, okay? So if I said the student moved with much alacrity to class in order to avoid being tardy, you would in your mind think, oh, well, he's, he doesn't wanna be tardy. He's probably going quickly. So maybe alacrity means quick, quickly or swiftly or fast. You use your context clues um, to kind of come up with a general idea of what, what's being said or a basic definition of a word. So if I'm outside and I'm walking through the quad at lunch, tons of people around, I trip and fall and someone yells out, oh my gosh, he's such an abrobrium. You could probably infer that maybe that means a klutz or an embarrassment or a public disgrace. You could probably begin to piece things together based upon the context of what's happening. So looking here at our first worksheet, this is the first thing that we're gonna be doing today. It says readers can sometimes understand the meaning of an unfamiliar word by examining the context in which it's used. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing as we read through the necklace. We're going to jump in on vocabulary as well. Um, but your goal here is you're going to read this sentence and then use context clues to determine the meaning of the underlined word. So if this very first example says, my sister is so thrifty that she keeps old brown paper bags and reuses them as wrapping paper for gifts, we need to identify what thrifty means. Okay, maybe it sounds like she's cheap. Maybe it uh, sounds like she is money conscious. Uh, maybe it sounds like she is um, discerning where to spend money and where to not. Or, or almost some people have said like, oh, she, she's very um, uh, earth friendly, like recycle, recycling and reusing items, which thrifty, a part of being thrifty is reusing something uh, for a different purpose. Okay. Um, looking here, your goal, it says on the lines below each sentence, write the meaning uh, that you inferred. So as you read through the sentence, what can you infer about that underlying word? So I would ask you that you put down two or three words. So what does thrifty mean in this context? When you go on to number two, how will Tamika deal with the predicament, uh, whether to remain silent or to inform the teacher that her friend cheated on the final exam? What do you believe uh, predicament um, means in this sentence, okay? So go ahead and take a moment. Let's fill out a one, two, three, four, five. You have five questions, five sentences, five words to pick up on context clues. Pause the video and come back and we'll go on to our next feature. Did you pause? I hope you paused. Here we go, we're gonna move on. The next component, ladies and gentlemen, um, is down here regarding irony. We're going to worry about irony later. You do not need to worry or fill this out in this moment. So don't stress about that. We will come back to irony. Okay. Um, what you do need to pull up is this um, vocabulary worksheet. Okay. This vocabulary worksheet is a grid to help you um, track the vocabulary words in the story, words that are new and unfamiliar. Um, you will use your context clues as you read through and be like, oh, I think it means this. But we also want to know these words just to build up our own vocabulary. 
So you can go out into the world and use the word thrifty or alacrity or a brogram or predicament. Okay. Um, for this assignment, you've got this um, chart right here. This very first column that you see is where you're going to be putting the words. And I'm going to give you those words in just a moment. Okay. Um, you're going to write the word down. Now, this second item is an identifying mark. What this does is it helps you to kind of distinguish between do I know what this word is or do I not? And it's kind of a gauge to see where you are with your vocabulary, okay? I'll explain more of that part in a moment, but let's take a moment. I'm gonna go through the list of words and you are going to mark them down one for each box right here, okay? Let me move over to a new document, here I am. And we're going to go through the necklace vocabulary. If you need to pause so that you can go back and type it into that box, please do so. Our very first word, ladies and gentlemen, is adulation. Adulation. That's our very first word. Our second word is askew. The paintings in the house were askew. After she slammed the door on her way out, the paintings were askew on the wall. Our next word, gamut, gamut. Our next word is privation, privation. Our next word is ruinous. You can see the beginning word right here, ruin, to ruin something, right? I dropped the cake and I ruined it, okay? It means to destroy, to wreck, to uh, damage beyond repair. So what might ruinous mean? What might ruinous mean? Our next word is aghast. Mom and dad were aghast when they saw my report card. That could mean positive or negative, depending on the grades that you have, right? Um, let's see here. Best, um, exorbitant, exorbitant. She spent an exorbitant amount of money on her sweet 16 birthday party. Exorbitant, okay? Our next word is pauper. You may have heard of the story, the prince and the pauper, okay? Our next word is prospects, prospects. And last but not least, vexation. 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 She was so full of vexation that she screamed from the top of her lungs. Okay, vexation. Now you've got all of these words here. Okay, you've had a chance to pause, go back, and you have filled in this very first chart. Now the second thing I'd like you to do is to give it an identifying mark. Now, please do not waste your time trying to go over here to insert chart, like symbol, special character, whichever. You could just write the word because that we want to maximize our time as much as possible. So you want to put an identifying mark. Star means that you know the word 100%. Oh, yeah, I know what ruinous means. I've used it before in a sentence. I know the definition. Yes, I use ruinous in my own vocabulary. Perfect. Okay. So. For this, let me let me come down over here. Uh, if you put star, that means um, you know the word uh, completely. Okay, you know the word, you know the definition. Maybe I'll put that in there too. Completely. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is a uh, check mark. Okay. The check mark is where you kind of know the word, but you're not 100% sure. Um, it sounds familiar, but your definition may be different. So let's say I gave you the example of askew. Oh my gosh, 
Mr. Cortez said, when she leaves the house and slams the door, the pictures go askew. Maybe that means something like crooked or off balance. Okay, so you're not 100% sure, but you kind of have a, a general idea of what that is. Um, you would put a check mark. So you're somewhat, whoops, somewhat familiar, have a, mm, have a, a, a general concept, general idea of the definition. Okay. Right? You have a general idea of the definition. So you may not know completely what a skew means, but you have a general idea based upon what was said in the example. Okay. The last one is a minus sign. This is where you have uh, <laughs> no clue what the word is or means. Exorbitant, no idea. Right? What's another word? Adulation. I've never heard that word before. I have no clue. I have no idea. So will you please, on this paper right here, in this column, please identify star. I know the word. Totally know the word. Check mark. Uh, kind of sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. Minus. Yep. I have no clue what that word means. Now, some of the words that I said, you have a general reference. So there only should be less than half are a minuses, okay? Please do not simply go through and just strict minuses. I need you to identify, okay, yes, I, I know this word, check mark. Oh yeah, I totally know what uh, prospects means, star, okay? You're gonna do that for this column. Go ahead and pause, fill in that column. Now that you've had a chance to give it an identifying mark, here's what you're going to do. For any word that has a, oh, I shouldn't have moved myself. Any word that has a star or a check mark, okay? Oops, that's not what I want. If it has a star or, just so you guys can see it, or a check mark, if it has any of these words, any of those words that you gave it a star or a check mark, you will need to go over here to this next column and put down what you think the word means. It doesn't have to be a correct definition. It doesn't have to be um, the right definition. If you were like, oh, I think ruinous means that something's destroyed. Put down, something is destroyed. Okay. Oh, he talked about being something being askew. So it's like off balance. He kept moving this with his hand. So I'm going to say like slanted. Great. If that's what you think the word means, then let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So you've had, now had a chance to fill in this column. If not, pause, fill in that column. The dictionary definitions will come when we read through the story. You'll see the word and at the very bottom will be the definition. Um, and you'll have a chance to come back to this vocabulary page and fill it out. The other thing, ladies and gentlemen, is you want to write down the sentence in which you found it. So this will actually be a growing document and will continue to grow. Um, so this will be, this will move down the page, okay? Now, for today, you're gonna to be submitting and turning in the context clues paper, okay? You will turn in this one. Remember, you are not doing anything for irony down below. We're not gonna worry about that, that yet. Um, you are just doing these first five, and this is what you will submit, okay? Your vocabulary paper, this one right here, will need to keep in your Google Doc and save because we are going to come back to this multiple times. Um, it, it'll be important for you to know those words, to be able to use them. Um, so we want to keep this for right now. So do not turn in your vocabulary paper, okay? That, ladies and gentlemen, is, is our context clues or vocabulary lesson. Please make sure that you've got all of the things filled out before before you move on. I would hate for you to have a blank space in here um, and then have to go back and fix it. Like we might as well just do the work right now. OK, um, but overall, good job. We're going to continue on. We're reading the necklace. It's a great story. You guys are going to love it. Talk to you soon.